One of the most common requests I get from my clients is to duplicate a portal along with the record. In other words, duplicate the children with the parent. So let me demonstrate real quickly, but before we do that, let's take a look at how to find this example file. All you have to do is go to the databasepros.com website, you can see it right there, then click on the resources link, and in this case we'll type in duplicate portal. A few things will come up, but you're looking at the first one here, Duplicate Portal right here. Just download it with the green arrow, and then you'll have this exact example file. So what does it do? Let's demonstrate. Notice how James Butt has this address and all that information. A normal duplicate would duplicate that, and we'll show you. There we go. We have 100 records right now. We'll go to 101. You notice how the portal items don't come with it. Let's get rid of this. We'll delete this record. Go back to that first record. We want these to come along with it, so you need a script to do that. So I'm going to simply click this button. You notice we get 101 records again, but now we have all these portal items. And it's very quick. There's no speed issues. I mean, it could be slow, I guess, if you had thousands of uh, related records, but it works pretty good in most cases. So we'll take a look at that script. It's a fairly long script and there's lots of ways to approach this script. I've chosen this way just because I've done it quite a few times and I want the easiest code and the fastest code and so we'll go over it and discuss why I chose to do it certain ways. So the first thing I do is I commit the records. Why do I do that? Well I've got to make sure that the relationship is updated so I'm going to get what I want, especially on this next line where I'm checking that relationship to see if there are any related records because I don't want to duplicate the portal if there are no portal rows in it. So I need to make sure somebody could have just deleted that portal row, still be inside the portal, click on the button, I want to commit that record first so that relationships updated so this returns the correct result. So then it will show no products, this invoice has no products, now at this point it should probably duplicate the record but it really does nothing at this point. So you can throw in a duplicate record if you want and skip all this stuff. This is the duplicate record along with all the other code to duplicate the line items. So the first thing we do is we set a variable dollar sign ID1. We set that to the primary key. That's my naming convention for the primary key, the serial number or the UUID, whichever you have. I grab it from the current record. We haven't duplicated anything yet. We duplicate the record. Then we set the duplicated records ID, which is dollar sign ID2, to the same value. We're now on that duplicated record. So now we have both IDs, the original record and the new record. We then go to the lines layout. Now remember, this is a pseudo invoicing solution. So let's go into Manage Database and to the relationships. You'll see we have invoices, a join table of lines, and products. So if you're not familiar with how join tables work, I'm going to cover a join table later in this video series. So I won't cover it right now, but the idea is this is a many-to-many -many relationship. One invoice can have many products, and one product can be on many invoices. You can't have a many-to-many -many structural relationship in FileMaker, so you need to make yourself the intermediary file, the join table, that will allow you to connect that many-to-many -many relationship. So you essentially make a one-to-many and a one-to-many to resolve that many-to-many. -many. So what we're doing here, we don't need to save any of those changes. If we go back to our script workspace, we're going to go to that layout that's represented in this portal here. So if we go into layout mode, we'll see we have invoices here. That's the table where these fields are coming from. And then we have the lines table where it's connecting to. The products table is represented here. You can see it in various places such as, I believe on the, uh, no actually it's not represented here except for this field right here. That's, that's not even represented. So if you had the product name there, then it would be represented. But these are all lookups and again we'll get into that when we talk about join tables in that other video. Okay, so what we do inside that script work, uh, that script that we're writing is go to that layout to set our context because we need to perform and find in the lines table. What we're going to search for, we're storing find requests and our find request is looking at this. In lines, 
Look in the KF invoices ID. That's where K, that's what's connected on that relationship. So each one of these right here, the Mini Cooper, the Contact Manager, and the Widget, all have the primary key from invoices in their foreign keys and lines. So I say set it to dollar sign ID one, and then I put equals equals in front of it because I use, and I'll show you here. I like to have my serial number fields that KP invoices as a text field. And when you search a text field, it's not like searching a number field. It will get partial matches. So I want to make sure when I put that equals equals in front of it, it's getting an exact match. It has to equal that exact one. So if I search for serial number one, I'm not going to find 11 and 111 and 112 and 110 and you know anything that has a one, and I'm not going to find it. I'm just going to find the one I want. Now we don't have to worry about not finding any records. I'm not doing any error checking here and I say that up here because we're checking right here to see if there's any related records. If it gets past this we know there are related records it'll find something so we don't need to check for any kind of 401 area or get found count equals zero. Once we found those records realize after find you're always on the first record in the set the first one. So if we start looping through them, we're going to start at one. You do have to sometimes worry about starting off at record two or three or in the middle of the found set, depending on what you're doing, but not after a find. And it's also important to note that we could have done this perform find restore with a go to related record. So if I come in here, I could have put instead of the find, I could use go to related record, gone to lines, and then choose the layout lines, and that would have done the same thing, show only related records. That's exactly the same thing. I could have eliminated these two steps. It's up to you how you do it. All depends what you like. All of these will work. So then we enter the loop. And in this case, we have three related records. So we should have a found set of three. We set the variable dollar sign quantity. Why do we do that? We set it to what's the quantity on that record before it's been duplicated, right? Why do we do that? Well, the reason is if you go into Manage Database and you look into the Lines table and look at the quantity, it automatically auto enters one, which will overwrite whatever quantity was in there. So if I come in here and choose, let's say, an iPhone XS, you see it automatically puts a one in there? Well, that'll override whatever I duplicated, so we don't want that to happen. So that's why we're doing that. And now we have four records, so remember that. So that preserves that. We duplicate the record. We then set that record's foreign key to dollar sign ID2. We're assigning it the duplicated parent record ID to the duplicated child record so that it matches up with it. So we have two copies of that child record. One's associated with the original record. One's now associated with the new record. Then we set the quantity to dollar sign quantity because we've duplicated. It's going to override that one. And then here's some tricky stuff. We omit the record. And you'll see this better. We're going to run the script debugger later just so we can slow it down. So we omit the record, go back up to the first record, omit it, and now we only have two records in the found set. Think about it. We had three to start with, or actually I added another one. So we had four here, right? I duplicated the record. Now we have five. Omit, omit, we're down to three, which is omitting this Mini Cooper. Now we can go through the rest of them. And there's lots of ways to do this, but I like this because it requires no calculations, just simply knowing how FileMaker works. And we simply exit loop when the get found count equals zero. So I think you'll better understand this if you see it in slow motion. Let's go ahead and revert all. We don't need any of those changes if I made any. We'll just duplicate 101 here or the 101st record. But first I'll turn on the script debugger. Put it up here so it's nice, easy to see. Run our script. Step into it. Commit the record. Check to see if there's any related records. Yes, there are. So it's going to go to the else set dollar sign ID 1. Okay, let's see what's in there. Go into the current section, you can see dollar sign ID 1. That's the ID number there. Duplicate the record, you'll see we're at 102 now. Set the variable dollar sign ID 2 to 112. That makes sense because it was right after that one. 
Then we're going to go to lines layout. Nobody sees this because FileMaker hides this because it goes so fast. Perform the find. You can see the four records are found now. See, we're on the first record also. Then we enter the loop. Set that dollar sign quantity to what it should be, which is a one in this case. Duplicate the record. Now we have five. Set that ID right there. See, it's changed to 112. It's not 111 anymore. Set the quantity, omit the record. Now we have four. Go to the first record. That's the one we just duplicated. Omit it. Check if we should exit. No. Now let's go on to the next one. Set the dollar sign quantity again. It overwrites the previous. Duplicate the record. We now have four. Set, set, omit. Go to first record, omit. You can see now we're down to two records. And as we do it, we're now we're going to get up to three, but then quickly go down to one. Now here's the last record to omit or to duplicate. And you can see we omit it, go to record, omit. We have zero records. Now it knows to exit, go back to the original layout, end if, and that's it. That's all she wrote. We have an exact duplicate of 101 here. So that's a pretty nifty solution to know because if you're trying to become a developer to make a business out of this, you're going to need to know how to duplicate the children. It's a very common task and so hopefully this has made sense. If it doesn't, download the file, run it through the script debugger and watch the data viewer and all the stuff that's going on. Slowing it down like that will really help you out.